Goodmanson, is he likely he's, to be back? How's he doing? No, not yet. Um, he's on the grass, so he's making progress, but he's not with the, the side yet, uh, so he's not in full training yet. How far away do you think, then? Um, we'll wait and see, but he's going well at the minute. He's had a, a good couple of weeks on the grass with the physios, um, building up his, his strength and, um, in running, basically. Um, so he's not quite to maximal sprint yet, but he's getting closer. So once that comes, that's usually the final tick box, you know, to, to allow him to come back into training with the group. Um, the other one from Saturday, Charlie Taylor, of course. I've come straight into the media today, as you know, so I'll find out more uh, when I go back down. I don't... The initial reaction after the game, I don't think it was a serious one, but obviously he had to come off and, and we got him off as quick as we possibly could. Um, so hopefully that's prevented too much damage. So I'll wait and see um, what the physios tell me when I get back down. It's the best case scenario in that kind of instance then? One, two weeks, something like that? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. These games with City at Turf more often been tight affairs. What's the... What's the why is it being well, yeah, like that, I mean, well, we, I mean, they're tight affairs. We haven't come out on the right side of it very often. We have, we've had the one, of course, um, a few years ago. But no, I mean, we, we, we know that, you know, we've, we've managed to make Turf more a very awkward place for teams to come. And our record's been generally good. Um, we, you know, we want, to, we want to take the game on. We want it to be different. We want to make as, uh, as many different ways of, of operating to affect their game as we can. Um, but that's the same for every game you know, we operate in. We want to win. We want to find a way of winning. It's, it's difficult, of course, um, despite Man City having a couple, couple of sort of awkward up and down moments. They're still a top side. You know, they've been unfortunate with injuries. Um, but they've still, I mean, I look at their side and I look at people on the bench. They're still a top side. So uh, we know we'll have to play well. That said, are you seeing more frailties than you've seen in the past? I don't think it's frailties. I, I think I think you know you lose even at that level. You know the the, the real sort of sharp edge of the market. You know mar teams trying to win the league, teams trying to win in Europe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You have two or three injuries. You know, and them little tiny details that can affect the way a team operate. And I, and I think that's difficult. Um, they've still got very very you know top players coming in and filling slots and and you know so i'm not uh crying it in on their behalf but when you're at the super elite level and the expectation is massive you know they're, they're even them them teams if they lose key players or or certainly players that give them that extra bit of balance it affects them and maybe that's part of it um i don't know all the ins and outs of it i don't know what you know any thoughts inside their camp but i certainly don't think they're a million miles away and i still think they're a top top side obviously i didn't see the game on Saturday for yourselves, but I read about it and saw the highlights as well. And you seem to be speaking about how you took the game to Palace in that second half. Can you take the game in a similar fashion to Manchester City? Or well, different, uh, different. Uh, first half, we, we, we were slightly off, um, sadly, not a million miles off, but slightly off. And second half, we got stronger and certainly created enough um, to affect the game, didn't take our chances. Um, against uh, Palace, slightly different. They play a different style anyway. You know, I, I don't expect, I'd be surprised if Man City, you know, try and sort of absorb the game and counter. I'd be surprised with that. They normally want to take the game on with possession. Um, so a different kind of feel. You know, we're, what we'll have to do is play well. It's sim you know, we can, I can give you a million different details, but at the end of the day, when you play in the top sides, you need a bit of luck sometimes. You've got to play well. Maybe they have a, a quiet day. Um, and you've got to, you know, everyone's got to perform and you might need a decision go your way. You know, you need all them things. Um, but when you get them right and the mentality is right, you can achieve things and that's what we look to do. Obviously, if you'd won on Saturday, you'd have found yourself fifth by yourselves. And I just wonder what you make of the condensed nature of the league at the moment with, what, eight points between the drop zone and fifth? Yeah, well, I think, I think the, uh, well, funnily enough, it, Leicester were involved in it. A few years ago, there was that kind of topsy-turvy feeling to the, the, the Premier League early on. And we all thought it would readjust and it didn't. And of course, Leicester went away and won it. Um, and, right, and by the way, fantastically so. I, I, I don't mean any other reason than, than they did the job um, in magnificent fashion. But it was a topsy-turvy year, if you remember. There was a few sides not quite there, a few sides not quite operating at the, the top level they, that we all know they can. So this season's been a bit similar. You know, you look and the, the changes, of course, in Emery's, you know, changed and Pochettino's changed and how does that affect it? Uh, Man United are not quite purring, obviously, you know, and all these things, you know, the big clubs that you expect, but they're not quite there. So, you know, I think it, I think it does change the feel of, of the, the league. Um, it's funny because the other day, you know, people were saying we were on a brilliant run and then we lost on Saturday and they said, oh, you know, you, haven't won, you, you, know, you only won two in four or six or whatever it was. And yeah, and all of a sudden you go, oh, right, I'm sure you were telling us how brilliant we were, um, like, you know, 90 minutes ago. Um, so I think that's, that's where the, the perception really changes, you know, that how quickly it, it changes from one result to the next. And I think that's just the way the media view it. We don't view it like that, obviously. Um, in my view, we've moved a long way, from, certainly from where we were this time last season. So that's positive. Um, 
you know, we, we've got to continue. We've got to keep working hard. We've got to um, apply all the details that you need to win football matches. But we've made a big shift from last season at this stage to where we are now. When you see the league like that, then, do you sense an opportunity to maybe take advantage, push up those top six? It's not that spots? easy. I mean, look, you, you know, because the league's top six, you, you sometimes forget there's still some top sides there, you know, and... and everyone's working to, to get points. Everyone wants to be in the Premier League. So that's what makes it so competitive and, and such a good league and such a strong league. Um, the margins are tight for everyone. It's just that usually the, the superpower clubs, you know, less so, they seem to um, be strong every season. And this season at the moment, because it is still relatively early, is, is just a bit of an anomaly, it seems. Um, so we'll see if it balances out over the season. I have to ask you about Dwight, because again, a good performance at the weekend and it, this link with Manchester United seems to keep cropping up. Do you just wish that that would go away, particularly as he's contracted to, what, 2023? No, no, no. No, no, no. He's, he deserves any any respect he's getting. Um Young player enjoying his football. You want to see that? I certainly want to see it. Um, he's learning all the time. He's improving all the time. His mentality is getting stronger and stronger. I think he's a top talent. Um, I've said it all along from even the first few times he played for us. And, and, he, and he can, the main thing for me is enjoying himself, you know, because it's not easy. There is, there is stress, there is pressure in the Premier League, quite obviously. But I just want him to keep playing with a smile. And, and he's, hard, he's an hard kid to get a smile out of, by the way. So, uh, you know, that? He just, just him being him, he's, he's, he's a quiet lad. He, you know, he enjoys coming in, don't get me wrong. Um, but he's quite quiet. He's, he's a humble lad. And, a, and I, I sense... I don't know his family that well, but I sense he's from a good family who look after him. You know, he certainly his dad played. That's helpful, I think. I've said it many times. Um, no, he's going. He's going about his business really well at the moment, and 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 I just want him to keep enjoying it, self learning as much as us guiding him. You know, I think that's important to young players, and he's doing a good job so far. Are you telling us your humour that's not bringing out the, the smile. Oh, my humour is amazing, as everyone knows. Uh, so uh, yeah, I share it with Dwight, but it's lost. It's lost on Dwight. He just gives me that look, and I'm like, all right, Dwight. I'll, I'll, bye. Um, how far away do you think he is, though, from, from full international honours? Well, um, when, when I see some of the other young players who are getting called up and are in and around it, um, in the squad, then he can't be far away, in my opinion, but I'm bound to say that. I see him every day. Um, I've never really questioned um, the national side of things, and certainly not Gareth. I've got a good relationship with Gareth. You know, it's, it's not easy picking the players. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, I know AD likes him in the 21s. Obviously, to be fair to AD, he hasn't always played him, but he, he, he is aware, by the way, that he's playing regularly for us in the Premier League. So, you know, I think that's been first class from him to understand that. Not all of the under 21s are playing regularly and a big part of a, a team, whereas AD knows that Dwight is. So when he has been able to leave him, not play him, if you like, he's, he's done that. So I, I, great respect for that. Um, if Gareth sees fit that he's, he should be in and around it at least to even have a look he has trained with them of course we know that um, then it wouldn't surprise me outside chance of the Euros oh who knows I mean there's a lot of football to be played before that just on, on Nick as well because obviously it's highlighted that the, the two goals at the weekend and, and you spoke yourself about um, it, it, you learn about yourself in those situations and, and it's about how you respond to that what kind of response then do you expect from Nick he's not someone who get, really no, gets down on it no, no I think I think he's he's still learning you know all players are but I think he definitely is um, he missed a big chunk of football last season but but we all know he's he's, he's been very strong this season um, but did, uh, delivering good performances so now and again one gets away from you you know and 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 it's more about him he'll be disappointed not not so much me I know it can happen um, but as a keeper you think you can save everything and he saves a lot um, so you know the first one's slightly soft by his standards the second one can happen I, you know I was a defender that it drives you mad when one flies through your legs and goes in the corner it's one of them things that can happen um, but the first one I think he'll be disappointed but I'm certainly not disappointed in him um, I think he's been terrific this season he doesn't beat himself up about it. No, Bill. Bill's always good. Bill gives him a balance. You know, they talk things through, and the, and the whole goalkeeping unit. You know, they. We, we, I think we're here. We still do have the goalkeepers union, as everyone used to call it. I think it's quite strong here, and I think, you know, they they collect uh, connect with us, but it is its own department and. Bill's done a good job with them and uh, he'll be speaking to Popey and Popey will be reflecting on it but he'll be ready to go again. Just finally for me, Sean, do you sense that City will come here with a fair bit of pressure on them because of the gap that they have to make up in the title race? No, if, if there's any pressure on them, they're, they're, I don't think there's a lack of people there can handle that. Um, I, we, we just focus on the game. You know, it, the ups and downs of a Premier League season, whoever you are, it doesn't define the next game. So we've got to be on top of our performance. We know that. There's still a top side so we've got to be ready to go. Hi, Sean. Just one from me. Um, Danny Drinkwater on the bench. Uh, 
how, how close is he to, to, to making a start and how important could he be given the, the busy period you've got coming up in December? Yeah, well, the one we missed out earlier actually was Westy. So, you know, Westy comes back into the fold. He's got a, a slight uh, niggly groin, so we'll have to be careful with that. Um, no, Drinky, Drinky was close to starting on Saturday. Um, we, we discussed it as a staff and inevitably I make the decision. Uh, but no, he's been good around the, the, the place. I think his, his sharpness is, is nearly there. You can't, you can't get truly sharp without playing. Obviously, we know that as in playing in, in real games, but he certainly put enough... Um, energy and effort into performances in the, the reserve games we've managed to arrange. Um, so now, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's certainly around the group. He's, you know, we want him around the group, um, but he knows the demands of it. We've got a, a lot of players that have been here a while who we trust, and he's got he's to forge his way into that. Morning, Sean. Um, you mentioned Nick then is sort of dealing with the, the one that let through on, uh, on Saturday. Does Joe Hart have a, a role to play in that as well as someone who's experienced and been there and seen it and been through a lot? Of like I say, it's, um, it's, it's, it's only a goal. It's not that big a deal, actually. You know, a, a few questions about it, but I'm pleased to say I haven't answered many questions about um, mistakes. But Joe, Joe plays part in the sense of, the, the like I say, the goalkeepers union. You know, goalkeepers in the old days would look after each other. And I think we've still got that here with Billy as well. Um, I think they share a lot, the goalkeepers here. And, and there's, a, there's a good, healthy respect about them. So I think he'll be fine. You mentioned Westy obviously coming back from, from suspension. Just how important a player is he to... To Burnley, if he's obviously fit and available, to no, he's done well, Westy. You know, and, and last season particularly, um, but he's but he started this season very well. Um, good connection with the side and how we operate, and good connection with Corky as well. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see. You know, the the effect he has coming back in. Should he be fit? Um, because we we like what he's doing, and, and and he deserves some of the the plaudits he gets. And with with Danny, then you you mentioned I think then just uh, having that sort of trust and, and belief in the players that have been there and, and done it for you. I guess that's the the balancing act with putting Danny in at some stage if he were to come in. Any any player, it's not about drinking, any player when you join a club, you know, it's it's you've got to forge your way in and it's not easy. Um, you know, Eric did well pre-season. Wasn't, wasn't necessarily expecting that. You know, Charlie had had a super season last season and, and yet Eric really, really pushed and pushed through pre-season and, and started the season. So, but it's not an easy thing to do that. So, you know, Drinky knows that. He knows he's got to earn the right here. He knows the players that we've got. Um, he's seen them at, at close quarters now. Um, but no, he's, any player in a group has to earn the right and, and, and he is working to do that. I guess it's a bit of a, a chicken and egg situation that he needs the match sharpness, but obviously he can't get the match sharpness without... That, that's always the, the challenge or often the challenge. You know, sometimes it breaks open for different reasons. We know that. It could be injuries, it could be suspensions. Um, and sometimes it's just, you know, operating at the right level until you get your chance. Just on, on Dwight, with, I guess, the natural comparison with the City game is with someone like Phil Foden, who's often mentioned as, as the next big thing in England and has probably started maybe three games this season. Dwight pretty much played every game for a, a calendar year and yet seems to fly under the radar a little bit in the in the mainstream, obviously not here. Um, yeah, I don't judge Dwight against other players individually. Phil Foden looks a real talent to me. Um, with all due respect, you could argue, obviously, with Man City, they've got a lot of players they've paid a lot of money for because they're top players. So you, you can there presuppose it's, it's harder to get in that side, and that's no disrespect to our group. Um, but but the, the great thing for Dwight, he is playing a lot of football, a lot of regular Premier League football. That, that's a massive thing at such a young age. He's just turned 20. Um, and I was saying to the lads, you know, he bought cakes in poor, poor cakes. So that's part of his development as well. Uh, we often have people bring some luxury cakes and lo absolute luxury items, and he bought a poor array in. Um, but anyway, but that's part of his development. And if he gets that right, he's got a chance. So it's all about the cakes. And he not made them. He's the Bake Off champion in the Burnley. Uh, oh, ranks. not me. <laughs> Did you bring cakes in on your birthday? No, I'm a gaffer. <laughs> and just, just, just lastly from me, um, Eric. I think Eric is Eric Peters 100% fine. He picked up. Looks I'll like find out more. I'll find out more. I think it was a knock though. I don't think it was a strain. I think. Yeah. I'll find out more when I go back down. Thanks.